In ethical hacking, it's yet another way to potentially execute arbitrary code, whatever code we want on the target machine. But it's actually really, really hard to find buffer overflow vulnerable systems at this point in time. Good coding practices have become the norm. Almost anyone that's writing code nowadays uh, for utility use, for widespread use, is writing code such that it checks all of the inputs. It makes sure that everything is just so. So typically speaking, good pr coding practices have almost immunized all new software. However, comma, I said almost because there is always someone writing bad code. There's always someone not testing to make sure it's, vul it's not vulnerable. There's always someone using the wrong version of the compiler. So there's always a very, very small potential for buffer overflow attacks to work in ethical hacking. Typically what I do is during the enumeration and footprinting phases, I'll footprint operating systems and services, what services are running, which versions of IIS are out there, which versions of SQL are out there, which versions of all different codes that I find are running. And then in a later phase, I'll analyze what I've found to determine are any of these versions potentially vulnerable to a buffer overflow attack. There may have been a patch out for a month, six months, a year, two years, three years, but if the system is not well maintained and patched, it's got the potential to run my arbitrary code. And then I'll simply either craft up my own code to attack it, or I'll just pull some down off the internet. It's actually super easy to find proof of concept code for buffer overflow attacks because they're almost instantly patched now. Even if a buffer overflow vulnerability has been discovered and reported, the patch has been out for probably quite a while. So I'm going to get lucky, really, really lucky, if the system that I'm targeting is vulnerable, but it is something I'm probably going to keep in my arsenal. If I can't find another way to attack it, I'll go ahead and pull down some proof of concept or some sample attack code, craft it up so that it actually attacks that target system, and see if it works. Probably not going to, hopefully not going to, in fact, but it may. As I said, most current software is immune by design, not just that software gets cooler, but that programmers get more aware that there are attackers out there and, and software development engines and processes take this into account. Buffer checking and exploit prevention is the norm now in modern code. It's also very, very limited type of exposure. A buffer overflow is usually limited to a flaw in a particular version of code and a particular type of code. Occasionally you see buffer overflows as operating system component or in operating system components rather. But for the most part, these things are patched really quickly and they're almost always tied to a very, very specific version of a piece of software that's running. And they're actually a little bit harder to exploit than some other stuff that we've already covered. So they're not the highest priority in my list of attack potential, but they do have a place in our repertoire.